Tawazani, Tawazani, Tawazani. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Great to see you guys again. And no one get a Balaleri, Balandeli, or some some institute. Tawazani, Tawazani. Um, oh, so, uh, I'm so sorry about that. Um, we do have a high, we are experiencing a high volume of calls at the moment. So if you can just be patient and keep on trying, it is temporary for you. For those of you who don't know, um, we are introducing an online booking system. It is in development and it is going to come. So please, please, please. I know for a very long time, Ms. Shupega, but for now, it's, you're going to have to phone. Um, so yes, Tina, you can go and tell your husband that Umsamu is live. Um, if he is at work and he's going to miss it, that's fine. The recording will be posted later. We're going to start in five, 10 minutes or so. We're just going to give a bit of time for people to trickle in and make their way there. Okay, so while we are learning, well, sorry, excuse me, whilst we are waiting um, for the live, for the actual lecture to begin, I hope you guys all have your pens and papers, um, well, your book, your book. For those of you, um, you should know by now that this is a learning process and we put pen to paper and we're writing down. I hope you've got a, I hope you've got your family tree, pens and papers to, to sit down and really write down what we're going to be discussing today um because it is quite important and um what is important is that you have your family tree right and every lecture we're going one level deeper into our family history right so that 12 weeks in the next so this is lecture number seven over the next five or six more, so over the next five lectures, so after 12 weeks, right, you should have a very, very good understanding of who you are, what you are, where you come from, and from who do you come from, okay, so let's just give it a couple more minutes, uh, what's the time now, three minutes to four on my side, um, we're just going to give it a three more minutes, and then we shall tuck into today's live session. Okay, if you called last week and you were called to call next week for an appointment in June, that is correct. Please call. But before we actually begin the, 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 the lecture, I will explain what Dr. Nkiza was referring to in this morning's video. Um, I will explain and I'll, I'll elaborate on that better for, for everyone here today. I will do that. Okay, time now is two minutes two. Time now is two minutes two. So we shall begin in the next two minutes. So if there's anything else you want to get um, that you will require for the next hour, uh, please do so now. You've got about two minutes to do that.
seven number. Um, so someone's asking about complaining that our our numbers are not working. So our numbers are working. They're all fully functional. It's just that because of the high volume that we're experiencing at the moment, sometimes you may call um, and you won't get a response then and there. But like I said, it is temporary. There is an online system that will come and it will be much better. But I'm going to explain that now. Okay, so according to my watch, it is 4 p.m. And we can now begin. So let us begin. So first of all, Togozani Sanbonani, my name is Siabonga African Kize, Managing Director at Umsamo Institute. Thank you for taking the time out of your Monday afternoon uh, to learn and engage with our content and just to acquire a bit of knowledge on how African spiritual matters um, how so, sorry, how contemporary matters can be explained or understood from an African spiritual perspective. Before I begin, let me apologize for yesterday's um, for yesterday's postponement. Um, there was a bit of an, uh, a slight emergency that we needed to attend to, and hence we had to postpone to today. So, before I begin, I just want to clarify on what Dr. Mkiza was referring to this morning or this afternoon. Can't, I'm not sure when the video was posted about when about the online the booking system that's in place currently and how to book so first and foremost we do not take booking requests via email we will only be taking them on a phone call and when you do phone and you get and you get through to somebody um they will give you the next available date and then once you have confirmed your appointment you will need to email them your id number of the pe yourself or the people traveling. If you are traveling by car, the registration of the car, um, the dates of your appointment, as well as your full name as it appears on your ID. And then what we will do is um, we'll ensure that a letter, a travel letter is generated for you um, that you can use to acquire a, a travel permit, whether it be inside or outside of KZN um, from, your nearest, um, from your nearest police station, and we will also send you our CIPC permit that you can also show the police station um, to let them know that we are in essential services and we are permitted to operate during the lockdown period. So when Dr. Mkiza was saying we're only taking um, appointments per month, what he was saying is that we're only taking appointments for, the, for, for, for each month. And in the last week of each month, is when we are actually going to in the last week of each month and that we use that week to uh, to to book new bookings for the following month and the reason why we do it over a week is because we have to sort out all the admin involved making sure all the letters go out everyone receives their permit and everyone receives a day and we're also prepared as well and making sure that we have the resources necessary so that's how it works but this is temporary um, we anticipate that in the next two or three months, we will have an online booking system, which is going to make things a lot smoother and a lot easier. And on top of that, when it comes, but the booking system is going to be more than just a booking system in the sense that you will begin to have your own spiritual healing profile and you'll be able to, you will know, also be minutes of your healing session with Dr. Mkise and if you forget oh, what the doctor say during the consultation, what should I do with this herb or this medicine? It is all going to be on that, on your spiritual, on sorry, on your spiritual healing profile. That's so that's what we're working on at the at the at the moment. So please just bear with us and give us a bit of time whilst we work on that. So today we're focusing on African culture and God. Um and I waited for lecture seven or for us to be quite far into this lecture series before I begin the conversation around God and African culture. Before I begin, I think we all need to understand that spirituality is the foundation of culture and culture is the, is the foundation of who we are. But the most important thing is spirituality. And I want you to look at everything from a spiritual perspective and not necessarily a cultural one. Um, we need to remove the lens of culture and, eth and ethnicity because that segregates and it divides. Um, and we've seen historically in South Africa how powerful um, 
ethnicity can divide, and more particularly in the black population. And whereas spirituality um, unites and doesn't look at different races, but rather looks at the human race as a whole. So for those of you who, who are joining us today for the first time, thank you very much for joining us. And just a quick lecture recap, we've looked at the fundamentals, we've looked at surnames, uh, I did a bit of a breakaway session in which I looked at assisted conception, um, really discussing the African spiritual implications behind this. Um, so the identity and surnames lecture did take place over two lectures because it was quite a bit to get into because I had to go through how we correct mistakes from four generations back. Um, we then went on to, we then had a discussion of Imimoya and understanding how Imimoya works and how they clash and how they can result in uh, the formation or the, res or the birth of Amawel. And then the last one that we had last week was Ukzala Wembete, very, very prevalent topic. Um, a lot of people don't understand what it means, Ukzala Wembete. And then that's when I introduced you to the fourth law of African spirituality. And I really looked at the five types of Ukzala Wembete and how to actually correct them and debunked some bad healing practices and myths. So today's lecture, we're going to introduce a new law, the fifth law of African spirituality. Um, we're going to look at, so today's lecture, I'm going to tell you, okay, fine. In your family history, what level or what depth are we going into now and how this lecture relates to your family history? Um, because remember, the purpose of these lectures is for you to, to watch it and then for you to go back with your book, sit down with your grandparents, uncles, aunts, and have conversations. So now I'm gonna teach you what kind of, so this lecture is gonna be a different conversation for you to have with your family. So every week you should have a different conversation with your family, that's the goal. Um, the most important premise when it comes to this, then my favorite, the superiority trap. Um, very, very, very interesting. Um, and then we're gonna debate, we're gonna debunk this myth that religion is up against culture. And then, what I've come up with, um, the multi-layered triangle of spiritual connectivity, um, and how and how we how we go from God to ancestors to ourselves. Okay, let's tuck into this. So how I'll respond to questions is I will stop every once I've completed a question uh, a concept, I will stop and answer the questions that are actually on the comment section. So we've gone through, we've had four laws of African spirituality that have been addressed to us. So my laws of African spirituality are all found in nature and are also kind of based on science, especially when you speak about things like spiritual diversity, because even in, even in nature, you need genetic diversity, genetic diversity, sorry, and you also need biodiversity. So the same with spirituality, you need that diversity involved. Um, balance and equilibrium is also found in nature and that everything maxes out its potential. That's seen in nature as well. When you take a tree and plant it in a pot plant, it's only gonna grow so high. But if you plant that very same tree in the back garden, it can grow even higher. So today, the fifth law is the foundation of culture is spirituality. It is through the execution of culture, cultural practice, sorry, that one can reach full spiritual expression and manifestation of their ancestral gift. So I'm gonna explain what that means. It means, simply put, that one um, is born with an ancestral gift. And it is through spiritual liberation, once you liberate Itong or your spirit, then do you have access or reach to your ancestral gift? And once you have access, once you have accessed it and reached it, right, can you can it begin to manifest in your work, your life, and um, your relationships? Simply put. But I'm gonna expand on it as we go along. So the kind of questions or the kind of conversation you should be having after this lecture today is we're focusing on the history of religious practice in your family. How did your family explore God, right? How did your family um, go about finding or, or celebrating or worshiping or interacting or engaging with a higher being? So I'm not, this is not, how this is not African culture. African culture is not a religious, 
is, is not necessarily a religious practice. I hope that makes sense. African religion is, okay? And I'm gonna explain African religion at the end, towards the end of the lecture. But just finding out, like when I say, how did your family interact with God? How did they work to engage God or what kind of the history of religious practice in the family? I'm speaking about, was your grandfather Wagashembe? Was your grandfather ZC or was your grandmother ZCC? Was she um, Catholic? Was she Anglican? Was she Protestant? And okay, fine. We had a, his a fourth generation that were all Protestants, but then they changed to Anglican. Who changed and why did they change? And what were the implications of that change? What did it mean for our, what did the religious, what kind of implications that the religious practice or the change in religious practice have on our cultural experience? I hope that makes sense because depending on your religion or how you practice religion, it will impact your, your experience or practice of African culture because, because religion, right, will determine your understanding or perception of culture. I'm going to elaborate on that now later on. So that's the kind of conversation we're looking to have with our family or our grandparents after this lecture. Okay. So here is the premise um, of the ancestral gift. And let me explain. And I'm going to take some time to explain it. Those of you know that, that have been following us, I'll speak, I always refer to the three parts of man, body, mind, and spirit. Okay. When one grows up, each of these three parts, in order for them to reach full expression, okay, and balance, they, they need equal amounts of nourishment. Okay. So as much as we eat certain, the, certain, the foods or the things that we, the exercise that we do and the conditions um, that we put our body under or that, or, or that, we, that we have our body experience all nurture or detriment um, our physical growth or physical development. That's body. It is through education, both informal and formal. Informal education is just as important as, as formal education, okay, that the mind is nurtured, right? And when one nurtures the mind, we then go on to have a job. We, we acquire because we need to earn money um, so we can put food on the table and so we can survive. Now, by nurturing itongo, okay, by nurturing the spirit, right, and aiding the spirit to reach full expression, Okay, and being able to fully communicate with Itongo and your spirit and being able to comprehend the messages because communication without comprehension is just you screaming, it's just you, it's just a soliloquy or a monologue. You want a back and forth and a bit of an exchange. You want yourself to understand what Itongo desires and Itongo to understand what is most, is, is most troubling to you at that moment in time. So communication and expression allows for, for, for access to your ancestral gift, okay? Because in your genetic inheritance, there is spiritual inheritance. Spiritual in inheritance that comes, that you, that you acquire from your mother and father, grandfather and, 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 grand, and grandmother and so on and so forth. And it is once you are able to take your job that you have, whether it be doctor, lawyer, advocate, so on and so forth. And once you access the spiritual wisdom and knowledge that is in, right, your ancestral gift, you can incorporate it into your job. And then your job is no longer a job, which is a means of um, putting food on the table, but your job becomes a craft. And crafts serve purpose. So once you have a, a craft that is serving a purpose, it is in that purpose that you begin to understand um, why you have been placed on planet Earth. And that once you have a job that a job that becomes a craft and that craft serves a purpose, that purpose will then begin to give you meaning in life. So we have too many people that are very successful, but are unhappy or they don't, or they're not content with what they're doing. It is because they don't have a craft that is serving, that 
that serves a purpose. And this purpose comes from God. And I'm going to explain to you why, how that connection takes place. Uti, how God gives, is, is responsible, how God, how the, the gift, the, so God determines the purpose, but the gift is determined by Abadala. And then Abadala designate Itongo um, and Umundu with that particular gift because the purpose is not for the individual, but it's for the family and the greater community at large. Okay, but we're going to tuck into that now. Hence, spiritual nourishment is incredibly important. And that is what African culture is. That is what the execution of African culture is. It is nothing more than spiritual nourishment. It is not for, it's not to be done out of obligation because Ukokon Mkulu say I must do it. You must do, you, you, you should feel the need, you should want to do African culture and execute it because you, you, you want to nourish your ancestral spirit. Let's keep going. So what is the spiritual superiority um, trap? If you guys follow us um, for quite some time now, I'm not, I'm not sure if there's anybody that's new to our page and um, to our work. Umsamo doesn't focus on, um, on ethnicity and culture. What we do is we look at the spiritual implications or the spiritual practices Okay, sorry, spiritual principles underlying African culture. And then we use cultural practices within the Zulu culture as examples to demonstrate the actual principle. And then we say to people, Venda, Pedi, Tsonga, Tosa, go home and have a discussion with your parents about the principle and then say, Koko, Tinama Venda, or us Venda people, how did we, how did we, how did we ensure that this principle was, 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 was acted upon? And then your grand was, okay, fine. Tina, in Venda culture, we don't use a goat, we use um, a donkey or whatever the case may be. So I want us to get it out of our head that it's about culture and that everything we do is about a Zulu culture. It's not about Zulu culture. We use the Zulu culture as an example or an illustration for the principle. So this, the spiritual superiority trap, okay, is, 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 is I think is, 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 it's, it's, it's growing because a lot of people feel that in some way, shape or form, I don't know when it happened, but in us beginning to, to learn to love ourselves, we began to undermine other religious practices and other, um, and other cultural beliefs. I don't know when that, that took place. Loving yourself as a black person or loving, your, loving yourself um, as an African um, means that you appreciate the fact that I come from the cradle of humankind and everything comes from me. But even though everything comes from me, it doesn't necessarily mean that I am be above or better than anyone else or anything else that has come after me. Okay. Because the biggest mistake we're doing at the moment is we, we have the belief that African religion or African culture has everything that Itongo would need. Right? So let me just read here. The spiritual superiority trap is when one falls so in love with discovering their African culture that they believe all Itongo requires for nourishment is that and that alone. It is the belief that you cannot receive and benefit spiritual wisdom from any other religion or cultural practice. So what does that mean? That means as Minu um, I chuck away the Bible. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't go to church. I, I don't believe that, that, that I don't believe in, 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 in I, I don't believe that, I, I believe that the Muslims do not, do not understand God and their way is, 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 is beneath my way. And all I need to do is, that's it. That's all I need to do. And I'm never going to engage in anything else. I'm never going to read anything else. I'm never going to entertain anything else. I'm never going to look at anything else. 
right? It is when you actually undermine other religions or cultural practices, whether it's making fun of them, whether it's making jokes about them, whether it's mocking them, that is a form of undermining. And on top of this, you then begin to impose your beliefs on others. It's not enough for you to simply be content with your understanding and your journey. You should be so wrapped up in your own journey that you don't have the time to impose your beliefs on others. And then you are no longer seeking full spiritual expression, but rather you're seeking spiritual validation. So in other words, when I open myself up to, 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 to learning or gaining spiritual nourishment from other religions, I am seeking spiritual expression. But as soon as I narrow in on myself and undermine other religions, I'm, I'm no longer looking for expression, but rather looking for validation. I want others to validate me that I am better, that I am indeed better than them, that I am indeed above them, that we are superior, that they are beneath me. There's a big difference between the two. And a lot of people are falling into this trap and they're not reaching full spiritual expression, but they, they, they delving, they are so deep in validation that they can't even realize it. Okay. And then finally you become the thing you hated most. So in Africa, when we were repressed and we were told that this way is the only way and there's no other way you are becoming your worst enemy. You are becoming the thing that oppressed you. The thing that said to you, you can't be, you can't be African and explore other cultural practices. You can't be African, but be open. You can't be African and explore the very thing that said to you, you, um, you are not the human of cradle. You, you are not the cradle of mankind. Um, so that is the one thing I want us to do. You must understand that. And that is why if you read our books, um, if you read the, the books written by Dr. Nkize, he refers to Buddhism. He makes reference to Islam. He makes reference to Judaism. He makes reference to, pay, um, to being a pagan. He makes reference to the Bible. We make reference um, to a whole host of religious or cultural practices because we understand that spiritual nourishment cannot come from one place. When I, oh, when I'm sitting there at home, you don't only shop from pick and pay. You don't only eat the food from pick and pay. You eat food from checkers. You eat food from Woolworths. You eat food from um, you eat food from overseas. Even you eat seafood. You eat um, you eat vegetables. Uh, you eat. You have a you have a, a variety in your diet, right? Even intellectually, you don't, you're not constantly doing one, you're not, you don't have the same form of intellectual stimulation or, um, all the time. You're not constantly reading a book or working on your laptop, but you're doing different things. Hence, we have hobbies because hobbies are a form of um, psychological or intellectual nourishment, even though it's, it's a break, right? So why would we expect the same from Eton? Diversity is a requirement in nature in, as well as spirituality. And when it comes to nourishment, right, spiritual nourishment and spiritual food, the sources must also, um, must also um, be diverse. And you must be open to the notion. Because when I've worked in Nombono and they're telling you um, to go to, sorry, to go to, um, to, to, to go to, to Asia, um, and then you're going to say, but why am I going to Asia? Why am I going to a, a Buddhist temple in Asia? You know, Gandhi, you don't know what Itongo requires that spiritual nourishment because it's, 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 hel it's helping Itongo go one step closer to, to full expression. And from full expression, you then get to, you then get to your gift. Job, craft, purpose, meaning. Without diverse nourish spiritual nourishment, how on earth are you going to get there? Let's. I uh, want to take some questions now. I'm going to go back to the very top when I first answered. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Let's take some questions. So you are warning us against things such as black supremacy because they are turning us into oppressors. 
I'm not referring to black supremacy, uh, what I'm referring to is the belief that my way is it. That there is nothing else that Itongo can will ever benefit. And the day I realized this was the day Ubaba one day came home with a Buddhist monk's face. And I was like, how Baba, why would you want it's like someone? And he came to me and said, Sebong, I don't know why I have this Buddhist monk face. All I know is Abadala said, go and get this Buddhist monk face. And then only later on did did, it, did, did did they begin to reveal why they wanted that Buddhist monk's face? So what I'm referring to is that do not get so rep, never never feel that you are a sub, that you are superior in any way, shape, or form spiritually. Or never feel that Isintu, Isigo, Abadala, Ukhaba is so superior that you cannot access wisdom or knowledge from, from different sources because Abadala worked differently to you. If Itongolako sees something in Islam that they want you to learn and understand, they may send you there, not necessarily to, to assimilate the religion and become a, a Muslim, no, but just to dabble in that and engage in it because there is something that is going to, that is going to benefit from it spiritually. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to find the questions. So at the moment, they're just comments. Um, Okay, 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 okay. So there are just comments at the moment, no questions, so I'm going to press on, guys. Okay, all right, right. So, religion versus culture. And I hate actually religion versus culture. I actually shouldn't have put that down there. I, I, I don't like, because then it implies that, that there's some sort of competition taking place. There's no competition between religion and culture. Here's, there's, there is no competition. It's just different functions different the reason why the functions are different is because the levels are different and i'm going to show you why now culture is what you are whereas religion sorry culture is sorry uh, there was a bit of a typo there culture is who you are religion is what you are so in other words Culture is tied to my genetic and ancestral inheritance. I can't change the. I can't change. I can't change who my parents are. I can't change that I'm the father of a healer. You know that is in my blood, right? I can't. I physically cannot change that. I cannot, and 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 I can't change who my grandparents were. So my cultural practice is something that I have inherited that I cannot change. All right, um, and. There is very little room for variation and it's, it's quite fixed. This works on an ancestral level or an ancestral plane. Whereas religion is not who you are, but what you are, right? So in other words, I am Siabong Amkiza. That is who I am. What I am is a Christian Catholic. That makes sense. So someone can elect to be a Muslim or they can elect. And then, and then obviously, and that's why the people can change religions. You, you, you can change your religion in your, you can, you can have multiple religions in your lifetime, but in terms of culture, because culture is tied to your genetic inheritance, you can't necessarily change that. Okay. Not quite fixed. And this is an important plane. The religious plane is an important plane. And the reason that there are levels is because each level gives us a different room different levels of exploration and different um, levels or room accommodation rather for us to explore and dabble in different things. This works on the God or higher being level. Okay. So this is not going to necessarily, so uh, this is going to make sense later on when I explain to you in my diagram, but simply put religion and culture are, are a necessity. You need both because without both, you're going to be two out of three. And I'm going to show you why you, you need both religion and culture because they're on different levels, serving different functions and different purposes. Okay. Uh, right. So I'm going to introduce you guys to the notion. Um, well, this is how I, I made sense of it. The multi-layered triangle of spiritual connectivity. Okay. So the first level 
is, or the first triangle is the human triangle. That is the three parts of man. We understand that body, mind, spirit. And so the African spiritual laws one and two are the most important to this particular level, right? And it is through Itong that we're able to connect to Amanyamatong. But this, in order for you to have um, a complete human triangle, you need full expression of each part. And in order for that to happen, each part needs to be equal, receive equal amounts of nourishment that each part requires. Okay? So in other words, it's not enough, Uwuti. Yeah, no, physically you look after yourself, spirit, you know, you do everything that needs to be done for Itongo, but intellectually you're not engaging with your work. You're not reading, you're not furthering your you're not furthering yourself, you're not learning more about your your job, you're not um, studying further, you're not um, engaging with different kinds of texts. So if you don't grow yourself intellectually, then how is Itongo meant to take your job from craft, um, from job to craft and beyond? Right. So this so ancestral law one and two are the most important to this particular level. Okay. The next level is the ancestral level. Right? So the top has three parts. This ancestral layer has um has two parts to it, right? There are three names, yeah. You can either say ancestors, Amaklozi, Amatongo, Abadala, up to you. Right? There are three parts to level one, two parts to level two, and one part to level one. So on the on the ancestors part, because you are made up of both mom and dad, those and, and because Abadala are made up of mom and dad, there are two parts to level two, right? And on this level, okay, this is where African culture operates. And your strongest connection to this level is your own ancestral spirit, Itongo Lako. So you will not be able to connect to Amanyama Tongo if when you are not able to nourish Itongo Lako, your own ancestral spirit. Because if it does not feel um, like it is like it is being nourished, you cannot connect to Abadala, and because you cannot connect to Abadala, there is a, then a, a, um, an, an implication on the connection you have with God. Let me explain. Let me let me further. Let me let me elaborate. I'll elaborate on that now. The next level, sorry, is is that where God is involved, or a higher being, or Allah. So different religions refer to God as different things. And I'm not going to say that there's only one God um, because different religions will experience God differently. Like in, in, in Hinduism, if I stand to be corrected, in Hinduism, they have multiple gods, right? Um, so I'm going to use the term God as for, as, as just to, to um, describe one unit. But in actual fact, People can, different religion is experiences and explore God differently. But um, God is this level. So now this um, diagram here is not 2D, but rather it is 3D. Okay. It is three-dimensional, not two-dimensional. So here it looks like it's two-dimensional when it's actually three-dimensional with the human level being at the top and then the God or higher being level being at the bottom. My apologies for the, the arrows being in the incorrect places. Um, I think once I moved it across from PowerPoint, they shift around. Apologies for that. But basically what I'm trying to demonstrate here is God or the higher being, because it came first before anything else in the world. God was first or higher being was involved. Before, before human beings, before dinosaurs, before um, single cellular organisms, um, there was God. Hence, God is the higher being is the foundation. The foundation or God decides the purpose that needs. Okay, so God decides, has the blueprint. So God or the higher being has the blueprint for life, 
right? God or the higher being knows the purpose that he knows where we where where the African population or, or people of Africa or the human race needs where we need to go. Okay. He also understands that there are certain individuals that are the ones that are going to get us to where we need to go. So God is the foundation, right? And then God will communicate the purpose um, that, or, 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 or the mission is going to be communicated to the ancestors, right? On the ancestral level. And then Abadala will desig will send one Itongo to enter into said individual human being, right? And then with Lelo Tongo is the mission that comes from God. So God is going to communicate the mission to Labadala Bagam Kiz and Nobagashamini or so on and so forth, and say, This is the mission. Then these ancestors will sit together and say, Okay, fine, if this is the mission. Different roles. So in, when you do an investigation, you have an aim. And then in order to meet your aim, there are different objectives that need to be fulfilled. So in order for you to meet your objectives and tick every single box, different purposes and different roles need to be fulfilled as well. It is at that moment that Abadala decide, okay, this individual is going to be responsible for this objective. Hence, we are going to give him that ancestral gift and that purpose for that meaning and that is why it is a, it requires that's why it, it is not enough for one individual to move the human race forward but we need a collection of individuals because different individuals have different objectives towards the greater aim i hope that makes sense so god is going to say this is what I, so God decides the aim. Yeah, so God is going to say, this is the aim, right? Abadala are going to digest that and break it down into objectives. Once they have broken it down into objectives, they're going to understand, okay, fine. We're going to send um, Lelo Tongo to that individual with that gift, Lelo Tongo to that individual with that gift, Lelo Tongo to that individual with that gift. Each gift is going to serve a particular objective. And by making sure that each and every single member of the family is taking off their objective, right? In other words, the job is becoming a craft which is serving purpose and giving the individual meaning, then the family has achieved, has done their job that God requires of them, right? Because God considers the entire, God considers the entire human race. Tinabadala, we consider our family, right? And other families in our, or our communities. And then by our family completing their mission and another family and another family, then what you find is an entire race begins to move forward. That is why, okay, on the ancestral level, right, we don't, that is why if you look here, we don't have, yes, you can go to church and wor worship God. That is why when Abadala say to you, go into, go and go, go and see a Buddhist monk um, and consult with him for two or three hours, they, and they have, they understand because of that connection, their connection with God is different to the connection we have with God. Yes, we have a connection with God. That connection is definitely there. But Lea Abadala is different. Because from Abadala, they, can, they are able to say, okay, fine, what kind of spiritual nourishment do you require? Okay. So now when one does, now when one does, does not, so I'm going to show you guys, why it is important to have both religion and culture involved. Because on this plane here, between ancestor and God is African religion. Between yourself and ancestors is culture. So you need to make sure that both, but both of these elements are a form of spiritual nourishment. So you need to make sure that you are, you are nourishing Itongo with, a di with both culture and African religion or religion. Let me explain. 
So when one says to you, which you know, Sindisiwe, Yasonda Pella, and Ningenis in the Sabatala, and Kabi, and Nins Luto, nothing. What they are on, what they, the connection that they are severing or that they are, are choosing to omit is the one between human and ancestors. So now your triangle is going to, so now your triangle is going to be broken here. You need a complete triangle in which both all three levels are, you should be able to bounce between each level. Because remember guys, as things are happening in the world, as things are happening in the world, things are changing, people are doing certain things. God is sitting with the blueprint, what needs to happen on planet earth for human beings. He's constantly sending out like different messages. They're getting different messages back. And then Bona, they need to also say, okay, fine, tell what change of plan. Here's the new, here's the new, here's the new objective. Come back. The objective has changed a little bit. Come back. You know, this is a new gift. Okay, we're adding on to this new gift. Um, okay, Shaks, you need something new. Um, okay, you're gonna get married to that individual, to that family, and, and from that family, you're gonna get another get and you're gonna get someone else's name. And Lelo Tong is going to bless you with a different ancestral gift on top of the one that you have now, which is going to help us meet our new objective. So you see, those kind of exchanges are constantly taking place. There's, there's movement. Hence, you need all three levels to be in sync and connected to one another. Okay? So when said individual decides, falls into the trap of um, the superiority trap. And all he knows is Isinto, Isigo. That's it. That's all I know. I'm executing Isinto and Isigo. I'm not going to entertain any. I'm not going to read up on any other religion. I'm not going to engage. I'm not going to, um, I'm going to undermine other religious practices. What they are doing is they only have this connection here. Right? So now what they are essentially doing is they are limiting the... The, they are limiting their own potential because mind you, what you have is you have God is saying, listen, there is a change of plan. Here is a new aim or here is a, 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 an amended aim or a changed aim. Okay. Now your ancestors are the ones that are sitting down together like, okay, fine. The aim has changed. The objectives need to be changed. Therefore, the roles and responsibilities need to change. Right. But now, how are your ancestors going to get that message? How are they going to, to, to receive that message? How are they, and how are they going to communicate it to you if when you have forgotten about the African religious aspect of it? So you are not nourishing Itong with African religion, and now your triangle, your African triangle, your multi-layered triangle of spiritual connectivity is broken. I just want to take some questions before I talk into African spirituality. Um oh sorry guys, I was meant to move that. Um okay, I'm just tucking into questions now. Um I just wanted to put this comment on. This is exactly what I'm talking about when I say about keep things open. Tarot cards and crystals aren't necessarily black or African, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean what Abadala don't want you to dabble in that. That doesn't necessarily mean what Abadala can't use that or they can't adapt to that. Africa, the beautiful thing about African religion is its ability to adapt. And I'm going to explain that to you now. I just want to answer some questions. Um, um, okay, I just want to just handle this. Okay, the issue is not per se who is right right now, but there is life after death. And where do we go from there? Depending on what you believe in now determines your afterlife. Okay. Um, you are correct. So I think we can all, I think most human beings believe we all, we all have the belief, share the premise that, or the belief that, um, I don't know, let me not speak for human beings. Let me just say, I, I share the belief that um, there is life after death. You see, belief is tricky because I can believe that I can do whatever, I can go to, I can move to the US of A and Isn't Zabat Dada will never follow me. But that's why I was speaking about culture and religion. You can't change. Sometimes it's not a matter of belief. It's about what's in your blood. What have you inherited? You know, so we need to be careful about belief 
and facts because it's in your blood. You, if, if, if something is in your blood, which you are the son of Inyang or you are the daughter of Isanus, you, you can't change that. So whether or not you believe that that has implications on you is not going to stop it from actually happening or taking place. Um, here we go. I had a question you didn't answer. Do non-African religions respect or accept African religions or beliefs as religions? Hmm. So I'm not, um, I'm, I'm not, uh, so I will admit that I'm not particularly well read up on exactly if other religions do respect or how other religions perceive African culture or African religion as a whole. Um, what I'm focusing on at the moment is I'm saying, what I'm focusing on is we need to look at ourselves and we need to think about, excuse me, what are we doing wrong as Africans? And I'm going to explain African religion now, and I hope it makes sense. And you're going to see why African religion, why your question, I don't want to say it's a, I don't, how do I put it? Why your question is doesn't really matter. If you understand African religion and you're focused on African religion, it's not going to really matter what other religions perceive of you. You know, what other religions feel or think about you. Remember what I said about the spiritual superiority trap. It doesn't hurt. If I, if Itongolam benefits something from Buddhism or Islam, it benefits me. And by benefiting me, it benefits my family and my family, it benefits Africans in Africa. If, I'm not saying that's the case, if Islam doesn't respect African religion and respect African culture, then that's on them, not on me. You know, that's on them, not me. I am, my focus is taking, Af my focus, Africa first. Okay. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, okay, Morgeta has quite a few questions. Um, okay, delayed question. I'm watching and pausing on YouTube. What religion did we practice before colonization? What did we have? So, guys, please can you read up on Kemet, um, African religion. That is K E M Kemet African religion. Yeah. And those of you on, Af um, there's a gentleman, the, ooh, who is it? Hold on. Yeah, it's K E M, uh, Kematic religion, Kematic African religion. And that was the one, if I'm not correct, if I'm saying to be correct, that is what we practiced before colonization that is what we practice before calling it comatic religion and what you'll find is there's what you'll find from comatic religion is that you'll find a lot of the elements from comatic religion are found in other religions um around the world though i must say i am i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm still learning a lot more about comatic religion and there probably will be a lecture on comatic religion will be which will be given and um, i am preparing that but this this concept here, what did we do before? That is going to be a whole lecture on its own. So it's going to be Kemet, Kemet religion. Please correct me if I'm saying it incorrectly. I, I, I really don't mind being corrected by anyone here if I'm saying anything incorrectly. Okay. Okay. Let's say mom's Anglican and dad's family is Catholic. Uh, okay. Can law, blah, 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 blah. Can mama request you to become Anglican? Okay. So... Um, Michael, it depends on, it depends on what surname you have as a family. So, excuse me, um, Tina Bagam Kizen, it's Catholic, right? Were my sisters to marry into a, 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 a my sister to marry into a, um, Anglican family, then she would practice Anglican religion and she would practice, you know, she would, she would go to an Anglican church and she would do things the Anglican way. Right. Um, when, if you have your mother's maiden surname, um, or you have your, assume you have your mother's maiden surname and your mother is, is Anglican, she can request, you, you can become Anglican and stay Anglican. I hope that answers your question. If not, just let me know. Uh, okay. 
I need help. I have a gift of praying, but was passed to me by my great grandmother. I do pasha with water and candles, and I do feel the connection to our Dala and pray. So, okay. So, um, remember, if, I'm not sure if you've watched the previous lectures. So I said in the previous lectures, umtandas is a form of pasha, and kunabantu after the the the, the, the initiation. Are meant to become healers using the word of of God, i.e., a Bible. Um, they 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 they're going to become priests or pastors. That is their form of healing. It does happen. It does happen that way. So, what? So essentially, you are gifted with healing, but Isi can say to you, can direct you after healing to say. This is what you are going to do. You are going to be a priest or a pastor um, or a leader of a church group or so on and so forth. Because remember, Istunya is the one that is responsible for determining the final form, the final type of healer you are going to be. Right? This thing of Wutin is is incorrect to say. I've always said that. It's incorrect to say. Okay. Um, why does the mission go to those who have left the natural world first before it gets to those who are in it? Okay, right. The reason the mission goes to Abadala Kala is because when as the living, you don't know, we can't... Um, okay, by virtue of the fact that um majority of our interaction with the world is limited to our five senses we are unable to to say this is the mission you see because okay let me explain it properly the reason it goes to abadala first is because abadala are metaphysical beings they are non-living which means they can see past yourself you can't see past yourself as much as you we can say i'm not so i'm not selfish i can say i'm considerate you you physically you actually cannot see past yourself even those that are gifted even those that are healers no human being can see past themselves right they can see what's going to, to happen globally but in the sense that our dollar are able to sit down right and say this is the mission how are we going to reach this mission over the next hundred years and they can sit down and come up with a timeline and say, okay, fine, 2021, this is going to be objective number one, that's going to be done. 2022, this is going to be objective number three. 2030, this is going to be objective number four. That process cannot be done by the living because we cannot see past ourselves. In order for you, in the Abadala, our ancestors are able to see past themselves. They are able to communicate with other families and say, okay, fine, we don't have this gift here in the family. Who has it? Oh, you have it. Okay, fine. Our daughter or our son is going to marry your daughter or so on and so forth. Or they may have a child together, but they won't get married. But that gift will, you see, and then the gifts will, our gift and their gift will come together. And in that child, the objective will be met. Do you see that kind of interaction, that kind of converse, that kind of conversing, is too much for the living to handle. We can't see past ourselves. We, you literally need to see or think about every step for, say, 5,000 people of um, a couple of hundred families for the next four to 500 years. Can't be done by the living. Okay. Um, Sia, please assist God as a higher being. When we pray and pray, do we call God first? Okay. So, upasha, right, and pray. When upasha, right, you communicate. You can communicate directly to your ancestors because you are needing it. Because you had a dream, um, and you want to know what ukoko wants. So. You light your two candles, you have your bowl of water, and ubizu usukuruma na ukoko, and you're asking about what ukoko wants. Right? That's upasha. Praying is also a form of upasha, but it involves God as well. So it doesn't matter whether, whether you, so um, it doesn't matter which one you decide to opt for. Um, you can even alternate. You can say, Monday, ya pasha, or and then late next week Monday, Ufunuk Tandaza, that's fine. But when you so when you pray, 
call God first, correct? And then and ask for clarity or just to say thank you for protection. Thank you for looking out for me. Um, please continue to bless me. Mm. Does religion necessarily mean you have to go to church? Can one not have a direct relationship with God? You do have a direct relationship with God. You do. You do have a direct relationship with God. But what, what part of you has a relationship with God? Itongo lako has a relationship with God. So if itongo lako, your ancestral spirit, requires you to be in a certain space at a certain time, right, to connect to God, then you should go to church. So church, I like to put in inverted commas, because church can vary, you know. Sometimes church with five, ten people under a tree is what Itomolako wants, that they want that church under there in the tree. They may want a big church, or they may want they may be happy with a smaller church. This is the thing with that's why that's why I say in religion there's there's a lot of room to move. You can kind of work and communicate in Itomo to finding the church that works best for you, right? And that makes Itomo happy. Um and why so you do have a relationship with God, but it's not you per se. It's what part of you has a relationship with God. It is eternal, your ancestral spirit that has a relationship with God. And you want it to be able to be in the best possible position to receive the nourishment so and also receive the communication um, from God. And you need to, and and that may require you to physics, because if you've been there, if you if you listen to my first lecture when I speak about the fundamentals of African spirituality, the onus is on you to use the autonomy right, your autonomy and agency to use this vessel, the body, to put yourself in the best possible position for Itong to reach full expression um, and liberation. So in, use your, put your body physically in the right space that Itong requires, and that may be church. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, let me just let me just share screen again so we can go back to where we were. Let me just share screen again, um, so I can wrap up today's lecture. Um, okay, right. Okay, I'm just gonna um, last slide. African religion. So if you guys do have the time, please take the time to actually read up on African religion. Start with this interview. I think it was a great interview to kind of begin the understanding of African religion and spirituality of Africa. Uh, professor Jacob um, Olupuna um, is a professor of indigenous, indigenous African religions at Harvard University in the States. And I've just taken two quotes. Um, from his lecture, which I feel are the most the most poignant. And this is where I'm gonna to conclude today's lecture. When the, when he was asked, it sounds like African religious is, religion is dynamic and inclusive. He says, yes, it is pluralistic nature of African tradition religion is one of the reasons African for success in the diaspora. African spirituality has always been able to adapt and change Allow, and allow itself to absorb wisdom and views of other religions much more than, for example, Christianity and Islam. Remember what I was saying at the beginning of this lecture. While Islam and, 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 and Christianity tend to be overtly resistant to adopting traditional African religious ideas or practices, indigenous African religions have always accommodated other beliefs. For example, African amulet might have inside of it a written verse from either the Quran or Christian Bible. The idea that the traditional African practitioner who has constructed that, that amulet believes in the efficiency, sorry, the efficacy of other faiths and religions, there is no conflict in his mind about traditional African spirituality and another faith. They are not mutually exclusive. 
This part here is important. He sees the, I want you guys to listen to this part here. I wish I had highlighted it. He sees the other faith as complementing and even adding to the spiritual potency, sorry, spiritual potency to his own spiritual practice of constructing effective amulets. Indigenous African religions are pragmatic. It's about getting tangible results. So remember what I was saying. So how are you going to add to the spiritual potency of your job so that it can become a craft, so that it can become something that serves purpose and you can find can, can have meaning? If you succumb to the superior spiritual trap and you don't see other religions or other faiths as complementing or parts of those other faiths that can add value to you. If you, if but you choose to remain narrow-minded, and um, and 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 re choosing to reject other forms of, or, or choosing to undermine other religious practices. Here's the last one, and then we'll call it a day. What allows African, and this is my favorite quote, probably my favorite one, I fell in love with this. What allows African indigenous religions to be so accommodating? One of the basic reasons, right? Okay. He says, one of the basic reasons that indigenous African spiritual beliefs are not bound by a text like Judaism, Christianity, and Islam in, is, is, sorry, is not bound by a text you know how an african um you know how they keep saying no um africans were not we, we, we were not um a writing i wouldn't have a culture of writing it's because we understood this and then he goes on to say indigenous african religion is primarily an oral tradition and has never fully codified thus it allows itself to more easily be amended and influenced by other religions other religious ideas religious wisdoms and by modern development, emphasis on modern development. And then he says, holding or maintaining to uniform doctrine is not the essence of indigenous African religions. I want us to focus on this here. When he says, by modern development, the fact that Africans um, have been unable to evolve our spirituality and our culture with the times does not make sense. We should be the ones leading the change because it is our African religion that is actually in the best position to adapt. So please, guys, if you have the time, screen grab it, take a picture, use your phone or whatever the case may be. Just read the entire interview. And this is the one that will start the cascade of events that will begin to open your mind and begin. Guys, start to read about spirituality of Africa. Don't only engage in work written by people from Umsamo Institute. No, read about African spirituality. Read about, there are phenomenal individuals that are coming up with incredible texts, with incredible insights into Africa. But please, guys, if you can do me one favor this week, is this right here. So thank you very much for taking the time to join me this evening. Um, once again, um, it was lovely spending time with you. There's many familiar faces. I love seeing familiar names here. Um, I like that that continuity. Stay safe during this lockdown. Have an absolutely blessed and wonderful Monday evening. It's Monday. Um, and yeah, I hope the rest of the week goes on your favor. So please, guys, remember, we are not falling into we are we are the perception of our spirituality is going to change. I hope I hope I've begun to open your eyes about spirituality. When we say at Umsamo Institute, we we are about um, sorry, that we are about spirituality. I hope you guys understand now what I mean when I say we're not about culture, we're about spirituality. Um, oh, thank you very much, um, for reminding me about the Q&A session. Um, I will speak to the team and we will set that up for Thursday. Yeah, so Thursday we're just going to do a simple Q&A session. Um, open no no topic in particular really just anything that we've spoken about in the past couple of days that you haven't really been able to discuss that we haven't maybe have a question that i didn't have time to get to answer to so thank you very much um for reminding me that thank you for reminding me i will definitely get on top of that with the team we had we had actually forgotten 
Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so I have a comment here. Someone is saying that teaching adults is not easy. Um, I think it's it's easy for me. Easy because I'm 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 also a student myself. I remain a student. I, I I'm I'm just trying my best to impart wisdom as much as I can and what I know. Um, thank you and good night.